Good evening and welcome to our Monday Thursday service here at First Presbyterian Church. Monday comes from the Latin word which means command because on this night we remember and celebrate the new commandment that Jesus gives us to love others as Jesus loves us. So tonight during this service of scripture, music, song, and word, we remember this very night so long ago when Jesus gathered together with his closest friends in an upstairs room. Our first scripture reading this evening comes to us from Matthew 26, verses 1 through 5 and 14 through 16. One correction that I do have for us this evening is that the call to worship printed in the bulletin is actually our call to confession. So after our sung call to worship, we will join together in the call to confession. Let us now hear these words of Scripture. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priest and the elders and the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and they conspired to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest instead. What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. Sharers, 
Savior of your passion, that we may show your glory that shall be. Let us pass through these three dark nights of sorrow to Easter's laughter and its liberty. Please join me in our call to confession. We gather to remember Jesus' last night with his friends, the disciples. We, we acknowledge, acknowledge our, our kinship with the with disciples, the disciples who, betrayed who betrayed and deserted, deserted Jesus. Jesus. We acknowledge our need of God, who did neither betray nor abandon the Son. We, we trust, trust that, that God in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ never, never leaves us. us. So, so we, we confess, confess our sins before God, God and, and each other. other. Let us pray. Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, how well you know our hearts, and still you love us. You, you have loved us to the end. We, we have denied you, and we have denied our calling to serve you alone. We have betrayed you, and we have betrayed your commandment to love one another. Pour out your spirit of grace upon us. Forgive us for cowering in fear of what is to come, forgetting all that you have already accomplished. Grant us the courage to speak your truth and to walk in your ways now and always. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. And Jesus Christ even prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, a new life begun. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let us now hear these words from the Gospel of John, chapter 13. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered him, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and had returned to the table. He said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right. 
for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their masters, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you, do, if you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. If I give you, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Amen. Tonight, we remember and celebrate the fact that Jesus and his disciples gathered together in an upstairs room. I can only imagine that that room was full of tension, emotions of fear, uncertainty, anxiety, betrayal, denial, and even love filled the room. Jesus knew that his hour had come. The disciples were still unsure about what was going to happen. The gospel writer sets the scene with the first act, the first fact that the devil had already entered into Judas to betray Jesus. And Jesus knew this. In our day and age, we would almost expect Jesus to stand up and say, I know, I know who is going to betray me. I thought you were one of us. Get out! In many ways, we would want Jesus to call Judas out and kick him out of the inner circles, out of the most beloved of Jesus. And then, then we would want Jesus to demonstrate his love for his truly faithful disciples. But we must remember Judas wasn't the only disciple to fail Jesus. Thankfully, this passage in the Gospel of John doesn't focus on the wrong of the disciples, but focuses on the glory of Jesus. We don't see Jesus exposing the disciples for who they really are. What we get is a Jesus revealing his true character, his love, mercy, and grace. And in a way, Jesus reveals to us who we are called to be for one another. The Reverend Dr. Robert Hawk writes, If denial, betrayal, and crucifixion will dominate chapters 18 through 19, John deliberately constructs this scene so that we cannot miss it. In these quiet but unmistakable actions, we see Jesus' physical movements, which corresponds to his oneness with the God of mercy. Instead of exposing their hearts, not Judas or even Peter's, he reveals himself as the one who loved his own to the very end, even becoming a servant knowing full well the mixed motives of his disciples. Friends, during this season of social isolation and separation, 
How we express our love has changed. Handshakes, hugs, physical touch are considered taboo as we work together to flatten the curve as COVID-19 continues to spread. As we isolate ourselves from one another for the safety and greater good of the whole, it can be easy to participate in the blame game. Friends, this is a recipe for contempt. Pointing the finger, passing the buck, and blaming others will only drive us further apart. By washing all of the disciples' feet, Jesus demonstrates our call to participate in love. No matter our social status, no matter our gender, our race, our political affiliation, ethnicity, ethnicity, or even our religion. Famous theologian Diedrich Bonhoeffer wrote in letters and papers from prison, whoever despises another human being will never be able to make anything of him. Nothing of what we despise in another is itself foreign to us. The only fruitful relation to human beings, particularly to the weak among them, is love. That is the will to enter into and to keep community with them. God did not hold human beings in contempt, but became human for their sake. I can only imagine what would have been going through the disciples' minds as Jesus set aside his dignity, his honor, and his esteemed position of, as rabbi among the group. With water in a basin, he knelt down before them to wash their feet. Let's be honest. Feet aren't the most aesthetically pleasing body part. They are sweaty, smelly, dirty, and, in fact, just downright plain old gross. The disciples wore sandals and traveled by foot. I'm sure that their feet were caked with dirt and probably covered with blisters. Even still, Jesus loved them and expressed his willingness to be vulnerable, caring, and loving by serving them. After washing his disciples' feet, Jesus gave a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Sisters and brothers, we too are called to step down from our positions of power, prestige, security, and even comfort to serve the vulnerable in our community. God calls us to consider the weakest, the forgotten, overlooked, and even the undeserving. As we continue towards the cross, may our eyes be open to those who need to be washed, loved, and restored. May our own fears and insecurities of being vulnerable be removed so that we can serve and love our Lord wholeheartedly. Friends, the water is ready. Come be washed by our Lord. Come and be vulnerable before our Lord Jesus Christ and one another. Be washed and be reminded of God's love and God's call to love and serve one another. Amen. Or do you want me to? Okay. At this time, we gathered here, and you gathered at home, 
we are invited to participate in a service of washing. So where you are, we invite you to grab a towel and a bowl of water or go gather by your sink or in, by, in your bathroom with your bathtub. And um, we will model the service for you with foot washing. And as you wash each other this night, remember the command and say it to one another that Jesus gave to his disciples. Love each other, all y'all, as I have loved all of you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our next scripture reading comes from Matthew 26, a continuation of the very first scripture passage, verses 36 to 56. Jesus and his disciples have moved from the upper room to the garden. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. And then Jesus said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. 
Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then Jesus came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, you could not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. And so leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, with him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, how, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you didn't arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Amen. Oh. Uh -huh. 
Jesus was thine incarnation, thy mortal sorrow, and thy life's oblation, thy death of anguish, and thy passion for my salvation. Since I cannot pay thee, I do adore thee and will ever pray thee. Think on thy pity. And thy love unswerving, not my deserving. Let us now hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and a, like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him nothing in his appearance that we should desire. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our disease, Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. 
Who could have imagined his future? Amen.